Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to take a Unity character and give it some eye clone motions by bringing it into 3D Exchange and mapping the character's unique bone structure for use with eye motion files. This way I'll be able to use eye clone motions on the character in Unity. Here I'm using Jimmy Toon to demonstrate a few of the motions that I'm going to add to my character. You can see from the Perform menu that Jimmy Toon has a set of custom motions embedded. These motions are part of Jimmy's persona. Keep in mind that all embedded motion files in iClone are absolutely free to export and use in any external project royalty free. Ok, so let's go up and select the Edit in 3D Exchange button to get the process started. In 3D Exchange I can preview any of the motions from the motion library. Now what I want to do is just export all these motions into separate iMotion files without the Jimmy Toon character. So I'll go up to eye content export and then make sure animation is selected but geometry is not. After that export is done you'll need to make sure you have a Unity character. If you're new to Unity you can check out one of the tutorial packages in the resource section of the Unity website to get this model that I'm going to use here. I'm just going to drag in the character model to 3D Exchange but the first thing you'll notice is that there are some material issues. I can fix this by selecting the character in the hierarchy and then applying a material to the diffuse swatch. I'll just delete the material that comes in the opacity swatch and then move over and apply the bump map as well. However, you'll notice that there are still a few issues with the character's appearance. I'll adjust it a bit further by setting the diffuse, ambient and specular maps all to white. After I'm done that, I want to set the self illumination up to full and also adjust the specular levels to a suitable range. Ok, so now the material settings are a lot better. So let's move on to the next step of the characterization process, bone mapping. Just click convert to non-standard character to move on. Now on this step you're going to have to map all the bones on your character according to the reference image on the right. When it comes to the neck and spine, always go from the bottom mapping point up. If you have a standard Maya Human IK, Daz Genesis or 3ds Max Character Studio bone rig, you can do this in a single click from the drop down template menu. However, this is a fully custom created character, so I'll have to map everything individually. Let's speed things up a bit for the arms and legs, as those are pretty straightforward. When it comes to the hands however, you'll need to open up the hand mapping reference image and then map the individual digits. Mapping a custom character can take a few minutes, but in the end you'll be able to apply any iClone motion to your character or use it with any of iClone's motion tools. Once my mapping is done, I'll need to adjust my character's posture a little bit as well. You'll see that when imported into 3D Exchange, his toes are pointed upwards slightly. So what I can do is select the correct bone and then use the rotation tool to adjust it to the proper position. Also important is to check the vertical posture of the character and make sure it's upright. To adjust this I can go to the property tab and then set the hip offset value back to 0. After that once the active checkbox is checked, you can preview any of the default 3D exchange motions on your character. However, you can notice that when I do this simple running motion here that my character's arms are penetrating the mesh of the torso. To fix this I need to do some more slight adjustments to my character's t-pose. So I'll just bring him back into a normal t-pose and what I want to do is basically adjust the arm position a bit so the position changes will translate into little or no mesh penetration. To do this, I'll use the rotation tool again and rotate my character's upper arm section a little back and a little upwards to compensate for his relatively large torso. Now you can see when I preview the run once again that the arm position is adjusted accordingly. So now my character is all set up, let's import those motions we took earlier from Jimmy's persona library. I can just drag those directly into my motion library and then select the add all to perform option in order to get them ready for export. Again you can preview the motions in 3D exchange by simply clicking them in the motion library. Now I'm going to separate the motions and geometry here as separate FBX files, so I'll go up to the FBX export option. 
I need to make sure that I choose the Unity Game Engine as my export preset, and I select the Geometry Only checkbox. For the motions, I'll do the exact same thing. However, this time I'll select the Animation checkbox instead, and also select one take per file, which means I'll have a different FBX for each motion. Okay, so now for importing the character back into Unity. I'll just drag the character file to the character section of the project view window. But as you can see in the preview over in the inspector window, his texture is a little messed up again. In order to adjust my character's texture for use back in Unity, I need to select the model name and model material option under material naming, and then select apply. Once I do, my character's texture will now display correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag the character in now. That's the first step, now on to the animations. I can drag those into Unity the same way I did with my character model, and put them directly into the Animation Assets folder. Once those load up, you can see them all listed in my project view. To apply them to my character, I'll select him in the Hierarchy view, and then drag my motion file over to the Inspector view. Now I can enter Play Mode to preview the motion in Unity. However, you'll notice that my character will jump over to the scene root when I apply the animation. In order to avoid this, what I need to do is first create a dummy game object, and then assign it as the parent of my character. So I'll first create a new game object and rename it Dummy. I can then just drag my robot in the hierarchy over to that dummy, and the relationship is assigned. Once I do that however, I'll also need to reset the position properties back to zero for my robot and then select the dummy object and move it down to the proper height. Lastly, you may have noticed that the character is a little small for this particular stage, so I can scale it up as well. Now you can see that everything is in working order when I preview the motion once again. Let's go over to my robot again and preview another motion by dragging it from my project view over to the inspector and pressing play again. I can repeat the same process with all of the other motions as well. So there you have it. Now you know how to take any character motion in iMotion format and convert them for use with any FBX format character in Unity. Here's what the final product will look like. Go out and try it with your own characters.